Hello there guys, welcome. This is my review of the latest Hearthstone uh, expansion, The Mean Streets of Gadgetson. Without uh, any further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, please excuse my uh, voice because I'm a bit uh, ill, also like excuse uh, my lack of enthusiasm, but uh, I can tell you straight up I'm very very hyped for this expansion, it's very promising, like uh, it has solutions for like most of the problems with the game and it offers a lot of new strategies let's just get right into it so 132 cards that's like a lot uh way more than like uh, an adventure way more than like if even if there will be like three adventures they wouldn't have this many cards we have three factions the green Goons, the cabal and the jade lotus um all of those three seem powerful but my favorite uh, and the strongest in my opinion is the jade lotus they have some very good combos with the jade golems which we'll get to later. One uh, important thing that I want to notice is the fact that uh, most of the RNG, if not all the RNG in this uh, expansion, is uh, giving you an advantage in your hand, is not giving you an advantage on the board. So you can see that the, des the designers learned uh, what type of RNG is like the best for a game like Hearthstone. And um, even if it's uh, random, what minion you buff in your hand, you still need to know how to use the minion properly. You know, like shred or vomiting stats onto your board. And I think these minions are costed pretty nicely to most of them. So, the Grimmy Goons have, uh, Grimmy Goons, I don't know how to pronounce it perfectly, but they have Don Han Cho, give a random minion in your hand, plus 5, plus 5. Uh, 5 6 body is worth like 4 mana and a half. So you pay the rest of the mana to give something in your hand plus 5 plus 5. Usually just raw stats are not really that effective because of the removal options that most of the classes have. So the only way I can see it uh, being nice is uh, in a synergy with something like Doppel Gangster. I still think this card is like too expensive to be like that good. Don't think it will see that much play. I'm gonna make some bold... Uh, some bold predictions on some of the cards, so obviously I'll be wrong on some, but hopefully not on that many. So yeah, I don't think Don Hancho is gonna be that good. The Game Street Smuggler. Give a random minion in your hand plus one plus one. This is better. It's definitely playable. Yeah, it will see play. It's not really that great though. Will it even see play? I don't know. It's not that great. Discover a Hunter Paladin or Warrior card. This is interesting. It's kind of like a better uh, Novice Engineer. If we can even call it better. Like, Novice Engineer draws you a card that you have in your deck. This draws you something from outside your deck. But because you can use something from another class, maybe you can pick something that your opponent doesn't expect and something that can help you in this particular situation. Still, not sold on this card either. So the Grimmy Goons cards, not really that amazing. Like, they might see play sometimes, but I don't think there will be like staples or amazing in their archetypes. Cabal. Okay, let's get right to it. Cabal Chemist, add a random potion to your hand. And we see that there are some potion cards, most of them are removals, some are for Priest. I'm not really sure how good this card is, to be honest. Um, seems to have decent value in something like a Reno Lock, maybe. A deck that wants some extra removal. But uh, I don't see... Priests needing this that much, unless you play Reno Priest. I don't really see you playing it in Tempo Mage at all. So it's only good in like Reno Lock and like Reno Mage, maybe. Kazakus. Yeah, Kazakus can do anything. The question is like, how strong is he on average? If he's very strong, you definitely play him in Reno decks, obviously. Because that's what he does. I'm curious if he's like uh, really really good or just like a gimmick card. It's a, the card the kind of card is super hard to evaluate. It can either be like played in every single deck of this kind, like played in every single Reno lock and in every single Reno mage, or it can just be never played. Cabal courier, discover a mage priest or warlock card. 
This is better than the other one. Flimana 2 2 draw a card is pretty nice on its own. It's way better than 2 mana 1 1. Yeah, this card will definitely see playing like most of these decks. Like, even in like Reno Lock, you can play it. In Reno Mage, you can definitely play it as a one off. Seems pretty good. The Cabo Courier just offers you like decent cards. I mean, it'll offer you a Mage Priest and Warlock card. Priest cards are not really that great, but they have some decent removal now, especially with the latest expansion. Yeah, it seems fine. This card will still play. More than this card, at least. Jade Lotus now. So, like, the thing with the Jades is, like, when you want to play a Jade deck, I think you probably want to, like, just throw together all the Jade cards you have. That's at least my uh, take on the set. So, basically, not only all those are really good cards, you should also play them as much as you can in every Jade deck. A a black paw. Pretty nice effect. Summons two jade golems and has a five free body. A five free body is worth like three mana. You would would you play a three mana five free if you could? I'm not sure. It's two mana and a half, okay. And for the rest you get two jade golems. So the jade golems need to be on average four mana both. And you'd pay four mana for like what? A free free with four four. Yeah, Aya has to be good. And you have to play her if you wanna play Jades. Like, every Jade Golem also makes the next Jade Golem better. Like, yeah, the, the early ones are gonna be bad, but if you make enough, it's gonna, like, be worth it. This guy is really good. Discover, Druid, Rogue, or Shaman card. The thing is that you want to play this in every Jade deck, I think, because you can discover other Jade cards from other classes, and that can be very important for you. Jade Spirit, 2 free is like what? 1.5 mana? And then you pay the rest for like 1 uh, Jade Golem? It kind of sta stated like Aya, but on more on a more defensive note. Again, even if it's a shitty card, you still have to play it. Because at some point it's gonna become really nice. And when it becomes really nice, you're gonna like profit a lot for it, from it. You just need other Jade cards to be able to like use it efficiently. Okay, class cards already. Then I can talk about like what uh, is my opinion on how the meta game is gonna look like, even though that's kind of like impossible to figure out. Like p the way the meta games work is gonna be like something like uh, people will like find like one or two good decks and then they will play them, then they will try to like also refine them, and then pe other people will come with counters to that, and then they will be just be like an evolving meta game, and then like once in a while, bam, a new deck pops out and tries to like just beat everything. Somebody will figure out an insane deck and. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have an entertaining meta for like at least some months, but yeah, we see like a lot of good cards with potential that even after some months, maybe somebody can like find something new. Okay, Khan the Forgotten King, gain 10 armor or refresh your mana crystals. So basically it's a 7 mana, uh, a 0 mana 7-7, seven, seven, sorry, uh, when you have 10 mana already. You can innervate it out, so that's a plus. You can innervate it out and then also gain the mana. And uh, actually, if you innervate that on turn 8, you'll only get 8 mana because you refresh your current mana. That's something very interesting. It doesn't like allow for abuse. Still, when you can get 10 mana, and you can, when you can pay 10 mana, it's a 0 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. I think it's a really good card. I think it will be played in most druid decks. Fits nicely with Arcane Giant and you get another big body for like uh, 3. I'm not sure if you want to play, uh, or how do you want to play the Druid, because the Jade seem like the most powerful in the Druid archetype. Lunar Visions. You draw two cards, so you can compare it to like Arcane Intellect. Minions drawn cost two less. If you draw two minions, that's the best thing ever. You basically pay you like one mana to draw two cards. Considering that you use the minions. If you draw one minion, you pay three mana to draw two cards. So it's kind of like intellect. So basically the card is good if you draw two cards. I'm not sure. Minion heavy decks, how many do you run? You already have Nourish. I don't think it will see play. This card is also pretty bad. It might be good some once in a while from Raven Idol. But other than that, I don't think it will see play in your main deck. You have a friendly beast plus two plus two. 
There's too much competition on the 5 drop slot, I don't think this is good. If a friendly minion has 5 or more attack, game plus 2 plus 2. This is interesting. A 3 mana 5-5 five five is obviously nuts, but you need to have a minion with 5 or more attack on turn 3. Or you need to play this later in the game. Either way, I don't see like an efficient way of doing it. Even if you like innervate the 4 drop on 2. You need to innervate the savage combatant and then play this on curve afterwards. But usually when you have a savage combatant you want to hero power to like gain value out of the hero power from him. Don't think he's that great either. He's also not a beast. <coughs> Jade Idol. This card is like really insane. People have been talking about this card for like a lot of time. You, you need only one and you just never lose fatigue because you give yourself infinite amounts of cards and infinite amounts of Jade Golems if you have enough turns to draw them. That's like a benefit. Maybe we can see like a healing druid deck. A day that is just meant to survive and never lose fatigue, just fatigue druid. I don't know, these fatigue options usually don't work because uh, you only have 10 mana at your disposal and yeah, even in this, even though in these situations you can never lose. Obviously somebody will find some really good druid like at some point with the Jade Idol, but I'm just thinking that you play it normally in your deck and in the control matches you're gonna like uh, opt for a different strategy. Like apply pressure and cycle at the same time, maybe using Fandra with this. Again, really good card. Seems super, super strong. Obviously a must in the Jade decks. I mean every Jade card is probably a must. This is card this card is pretty shitty. You don't I don't think you're gonna play shitty taunts in your deck. But the issue is that it's a Jade Golem card and Jade Golem cards have to be played. Like you wanna play as many as you can because you wanna make your other cards good and if you don't play enough Jade cards then your Jades are gonna be shitty overall. That's one of the issues. Like, Blossom is another card you don't really need. Because you already have a lot of ways to ramp. But I guess you have to play it and you have to like modify the way your deck ramps. You need to like play a uh, No Mire Keeper and probably no for other than Fandral. Fandral being too strong to be cut. And then you just play like 5. You go like 3 into 5 or something like that. Or innervate 3 into 3 again. Into something. I don't know. You People will find ways. I really like the design on, on Mark of the Lotus, it's kind of like uh, only one of the effects from Power of the Wild, but it's costed way better. But at the same time you don't have the option of making the free too. I really like the card, seems super powerful, but I'm not sure how powerful Token Druid is, and if it's powerful enough to like be better than the G Druid or than like the current uh, Druids that we play. But if Token Druid is ever going to be a thing, this card is going to be really good. In Wild, you can play it with like a lot of uh, combos with like Haunted Creeper and all of that. Cheeky combos. Okay, Hunter. I'm really excited for the Hunter cards. They seem good individually, most of them. But I'm not sure how they're going to be together and if Hunter together is going to be able to make a deck. Hunter historically has been a deck that is very hard to like build. Like... Ex Especially with like the Cloth Hunters. I'm pretty sure people will find a way to build Hunter, but I think it's very hard to do so. Um, okay, Knuckles is a very interesting card. Like, 5 mana 3 7 is like under costed, but its effect is pretty cool. When you kill a minion, when you attack a minion, you also deal a damage to the face. So basically, you can use this minion to trade and deal damage at the same time. Every single time when you play Hunter, you kind of want your opponent's board to be empty. Unless you're playing like a rush, face, unleash the house deck, in, the, in which case you would want minions. Usually you are playing like a threat and then like killing his threat and playing like a smaller threat. Then he plays something, you kill that something and you play something else. So basically you're using the bow, you're using quick shots, you're using kill commands, you're using Hunter's Mark and all that other removal cards that Hunter had access to, to like kill your opponent's board and then you push face. Well, this guy is weaker than your average card, but does both at the same time. Like, you kill a minion and then you deal free to the face. Kind of like a quick shot. And I think this card is really nice. I think it will be played. I think it's really good, yeah. Bold Prediction will be really good. Bold Prediction, Piranha Launcher is... Shit. <laughs> yeah, this, this is bad. This is awful. Uh, Rat Pack. This card I think is insane. It's one of my favorite cards of the set. If you look at it, it's like a better infested wolf. Straight up. 
I mean, first of all, if I see Dolph contested a very... I mean, this also contests a very good uh, turn for Hunters. Hunters already have a lot of good 3 and 4 drops, but... Besides that, it's 1-1 one, one weaker than Infested Wolf, but 1-1 uh, one, one cheaper. I'll take that every time, being a 2-2, two, two, but let's get real. You can just buff this, not only in your hand, but also on the board. The only issue I see with this guy is that if it gets silenced, somehow, then it's gonna become very bad. But... At the moment, there are not that many silences in the meta, but people might start running silences if this kind of decks become really good. There are also some new silences that have potential. But yeah, Rat Pack is like insane in my opinion. If you get it to like 3-3 three, three or 4-4, four, four, like let's say 3-3. Three, three. You get a 3-3 three, three body, fine. Then you get like 3 one ones. Like, it doesn't sound like that much, but it's kind of like Master for Battle without weapon. And in Hunter, it's insane! And you even have ways to like buff it more. Look at this. Hidden Cash, I'm not sure how good it is because it's a secret, but yeah, you can play it with Clo Huntress. I'm not sure. It's a very tricky card. Activates very hard too. This card, on the other hand, you will definitely play this card. One mana buff it by plus two plus two. The thing is that it wouldn't be that great to buff a minion that you have in your hand. If that minion would not have effect that would you be able to use the attack. But the thing is that Rat Pack can use the attack so very well. 4-4 four, four and someone 4-1 one, one, was, that's insane. And uh, Dispatch Code, though, deal damage equal to this minion's attack too. It's like a better fire elemental, kind of, if it gets a bit buffed. You don't even need to buff it that much. If you buff it by plus 1, plus 1 is already like a 3-5. Good, decent body for 4 mana. And bam, 3 damage, kind of like Black Ink Corrupt or Fire Alley. Again, Hunter has the tools. Will it be able to use the tools? Ali Cat is kind of like a living roots, just two 1-1 one, one beasts. You don't have the option of dealing to damage, but again, it's Hunter, he's not Druid. And uh, Hunter would love to play this card. It's probably better than Fiery Bad. Uh, Throg Beast Rager, I think you will play it if you play like a deck with the Dispatch Code and Rat Pack and like Knuckles, maybe. And maybe also play something like Hunt Monster and some other synergies that Hunter has. Maybe you, pro you probably want to play with Cloak Huntress too in that deck. It will not be easy to build, but people will figure it out, I guess. I'll also try some Hunter builds. Yeah, all the Hunter cards seem nice, excepting Piranha Launcher, and I'm not sure about Hidden Cash, it's very hard to like evaluate secrets. But Knuckles, Rat Pack, Dispatch Code, though, are really nice. And then obviously the buffer cards. Alicat seems good too, and Shaky Zip Gunner. Yeah, also like really nice because it buffs it by plus two, plus two. It's like better than Throg Beast Rager in that sense. The only issue is that like th uh, these buffs can buff this. For this to buff this, you have to like coin it out first. So it's like less reliable. One other thing that I really like is that the buffer cards are not beasts. So they cannot get buffed themselves. They can only buff the cards that can use the buff. Like this special code on a rat pack or other beasts if you have in your hand. Mage. Master Solia. Not even sure how good Solia is. Like, it seems like a value card, but how many expensive spells do you really have? I mean, yes, she's gonna be insane if you can Firelands Portal or Flame Strike. You get the 5 5 for free. But if you don't have one of those expensive spells, she's not that great. You need to play like a 4 or 5 mana spell for her to be like okay. For her to be insane, it would need to be a bit more than that. You can just like uh, Kazaku's uh, 10 mana potion and then play for free, that would be like bonkers. You can even do it in the same turn if I'm not wrong. Kazakus is 3 mana, right? Oh, it's 4 mana, so you can't. Okay. Um, Greater Arcane Insult, this card is garbage, but it will be good from Yogstar on and very annoying if you're on the receiving side. Uh, Manic Soulcaster, choose a friendly minion, shuffle a copy into your deck. Uh, so kind of like gang up. Yeah, I'm not sure how good it is. It might be like playable in Reno Mage, even though I think Reno Mage can find better things to play. Yeah, it's not that great, is it? Costs two less for each secret you've played this game. This card is like interesting if there would be like an aggro type of tempo mage deck available 
with like a Cabo Lackey and like Kirin Tormage. But this kind of deck seems a bit wacky. I really hope this kind of deck is not going to be good because if it is going to be good, it's going to be very annoying. Hard to evaluate again. I mean, most of these cards this set are very hard to evaluate. I can only see some combos, but we will have to play out with them to like see how it actually is. Freezing Potion seems very bad. It's a very nice card to get out of other things. Like, it's very nice to get it out of... Um, where is it? Out of this card. Cabo Chemist. The Chemist can brew you that potion. That is pretty good. Cryomancer, gain plus 2 plus 2 if an enemy is frozen. 5 mana, 7, 7. Yeah, I mean, like, if you play a freeze deck, it's probably okay. A freeze tempo deck, but... Don't think the, I don't think the card is great. Uh, this is kind of like Demon Fire. Again, a removal potion, so maybe we'll, make, we'll strengthen the Cabal Chemist for like a Reno Mage or Reno Lock. But I don't think you want to play it in your deck. Maybe Freeze Mage in some meta games will want to play it, but I don't think so. Potion of Polymorph. It's not too good, right? I mean, if they cannot test for it and you know they're going to play something big like Sylvanas, it's still a gamble, but you can catch them off guard. It's a really good secret from Yogg Saron, because it's better than the average mage secret. It's better than, like, Vaporize and probably better than Spellbender most of the time. Maybe better than some other secrets too, but it's not really that great to play it in your deck. I mean, I, I don't think any mage secret is that good to play it in your deck, so I guess it's just an average mage secret. I mean, Ice Block, okay, Ice Block is really good. Other than Ice Block, yeah, you play Ice Barrier in for this mage, but. Uh, Barn Bristle seems really strong in like Control Paladin archetypes, like Reno Paladin, Control Paladin. I'm not sure how those are going to be. I'm not sure how Paladin overall is going to be. Even though, like, last time I tried to like make Agro Paladin, I was like one, two cards away from making a really strong deck. And uh, they seem to have gotten some interesting tools. Like, even a card like Small Time Recruits might not be that bad. You can just ditch Divine Favor and play this card instead. It's more versatile. Really good in late game. Really nice at deck shortening after you... Also, like, good after you run out of cards. At the same time, you pay an a very big amount of mana to play it. So we will need to, like, play out with it to, like, see exactly how it plays out and if we can do it. Uh, Paladins seem to love to buff all the minions in your hand. All of them do. Give all the minions in your hand, give all the minions in your hand, give all the minions in your hand. So maybe there will be like some sort of deck that will just play a lot of like uh, decent one drops, buff them and do like some synergies. Like Ministry Martial is nice because it uh, gives you card draw. You can probably play this instead of Divine Favor. Maybe you even play the Burn Bristle, but I doubt it. It's a pretty expensive card. <coughs> But you probably play like even this card. You pay one mana for a one one buff. Like if you buff an Argent Squire, let's say to like a two two, she's kind of like becoming a mini bot. Even this is nice. When a friendly minion dies, it turns into your hand. I mean, this card is like okay with like cards like Tyrion, right? In very expensive decks, it's okay. In cheap decks, I don't think it's good enough. And I don't think it's good enough to make Secret Paladin really that great on its own. Without Avenge, it's very hard to like make Secret Paladin insane. Uh, Green Steel Protector. 6-6 six, six Taunt, and you give a DSM Minions Divine Shield. Very interesting card. Probably good in Reno Paladin. 6-6 six, six Taunt. You need to like play it and then attack to like catch him off guard with the divine shield. And I'm not sure if you like aren't already winning by the time they have this many minions. Eh, the card is very again very hard to evaluate. I know it's like a cop out, but most of these cards, this expansion, are very hard to evaluate. I feel like 
there is a lot more potential in other expansions but it's just very hard to say because they're so synergistic with each other and we didn't see this kind of synergy in Hearthstone until now so it's very hard to like predict easily without being able to, be able to play it green scaled kum kam siham how do you pronounce it Who? I, I will not try to pronounce it Kuhum? I don't know. Uh, give a random Murloc in your hand plus one plus one. Uh, can you play it in an Agro Paladin? Only with Murlocs? Murloc Agro Pali? Probably not. What does Priest have? I really like Raza. And I think Raza can be insane if you can manage to like uh, discover it on another class. Maybe you discover it on like Mage and uh, use it with uh, Koldara Drake. Just kill your opponent. Easy. It could. You could just play a discover thing twice. Try to snipe the Raza. You just need to play Raza at any point in the game. And you play Koldara and you win the game. It will happen, trust me. It will happen very fast, like max two weeks. It will happen. Dragonfire Potion. I mean, this card is very good against Shaman, excepting against Azir Drake. Really strong board clear. It's better than Light Bomb, and it will be very scary to play around Priest play against priest because of this card also if like most of your cards are dragon cards then you can just uh, not care about your side of the board that's why I'm thinking a dragon priest is gonna become really strong I don't think this card is good I don't think mana geode is good a lot of people have overhyped it but I don't think it's that great yeah I don't like it I don't like mana geode I like Draconid Operative though. First of all, it's a dragon. 5 mana, 5 6, very nicely started. And it just discovers a card from your opponent's deck. So basically, it does, it does what Nether Spite Historian is doing, but more consistently with a better body and is a dragon. One thing that you were lacking while playing Dragon Priest was like good dragons, and now you have it. Now you have this. This card can make is one of the cards that will make Dragon Priest really, really nice. Restore 12 health to a friendly character. The friendly part was made to like stop uh, Okenai combos from happening. I like this a lot. I don't think it will see play, right? You don't want to heal that much. And just plain healing is not really that effective, is it? This is a strong card. I don't think it will see play that much. Simply because, I don't know, in like a board fight, you need to like have minions, you need your opponent to have minions and you need to like be able to like trade them efficiently by killing their attack. You don't really have this situation happening that often. Cabal Song Stealer, Battle Cry Silence a minion, 555 with Silence, very well statted Silence card. If silence will be required in the meta, Priest is going to play it, obviously, it's a very nice silence card. I'm glad this is not a neutral card. It will be played way too much, I think. But yeah, I don't think it will be played in Dragon decks, they already have a lot of 5 drops. This card on the other hand, Cabal Talon Priest, super strong card. It's better than Dark Cultist, which already was a great card. In every single situation, excepting the situation where you don't have any minion on board, and you play Dark Cultist, and then next time you play another minion, like 4 mana minion or something like that. And then Dark Cultist dies and you get a buff on the other guy. Other than that situation, if you have a minion on the board, it's always better to play the, the Talon Priest. Because you can like direct the health already. You can also like surprise your opponent. And just uh, like, if you have like a 2-2 two -two and he has a 2-2, two -two, just buff your guy and trade. And uh, yeah, very strong card, insanely strong card. Potion of Madness is kind of like a Shadow of Madness, way cheaper, but can steal with uh, 2 attack or less. Not sure if it's good enough to see playing Control Priest, I'm not sure if Control Priest needs it, but 
it's a decent tool, a nifty tool. Also, it's a potion, so you can get it from the thing. So you might have to like be able to use it in some situations. I like the fact that potions are not really like uh, OP on their own, and they require some thinking. So if you play the Cabal minion that discovers like a potion or gives or, or brews your potion, I don't know how it's called. Uh, you have to like be able to use it in the circ in the circumstance you're given. Now Rogue. This card I think is bad. You need to like attack. I mean, it's stealth, but it's only like once and then it dies. Pretty bad. I don't know. I don't think I like the the rogue way to be played in like stealing cards from your opponents and making them cheaper. I don't think that's the way to play rogue. What I think is that Conduct Fit Coin is like one of the best designed cards in the game and one of the strongest cards in rogue. I think it will be like a staple in most rogue decks. I think Questing Rogue will love this and we'll see a bit later there's like a neutral card like Red Mana Worm and we might have some Red Mana Worm Questing Adventurer type of deck with uh, Contact Fit Coin being uh, able to give you some really good uh, kills on your opponent. Uh, this is a straight up bad like Strangle Turn Tiger. Really powerful card. The issue is like you don't really have a deck where you want to play it. You don't really want to fit it in Questing Rogue. At least not in the current iteration. In the current iteration, you would probably play this if you wouldn't have the Contact Fit Coin card. But now with the Contact Fit Coin card, you're definitely ditching the Swash Boiler or whatever killer card you are playing until now to play a coin, an extra coin. Just go a little more. It's like a card for Pirate Rogue. It's kind of like a Draconite Crusher that is easy to make, but it's only for Pirate Rogue. How good is Pirate Rogue going to be? I don't really know. I think Pirate Warrior is going to be good. Maybe Pirate Rogue with Gang Up might also be good. We'll see. And this is like Stealth Combo Guy. Very powerful. It like gives it plus 2 plus 2, but it cannot give it on curve and it's not really reliable. Like, what stealth do you have on 3 mana? Don't tell me Shadow Rager because this card is garbage. I mean, it can survive. But people have a lot of us who did one damage blindly. Almost every class has one way. And now even more, we have more AoE. Gadget Sun Fairy, man. It's kind of like the Brewmaster, but a bit different. The downside of the Brewmaster is that sometimes you had like a minion on the board and you wanted to play it for, play it for the body, but not take the minion back. Well, with this guy, you can just play it before doing the combo. So you can just play as a 2 mana 2-3. The, the reason this card was made was probably for like the Soundjeet Golem cards. But for which one of them was it made? Because most of the Jade Golem cards are... Uh, like, this is like a combo, it's like a Death Rattle. Yeah, I guess it's, it was not made for the Jade Golem cards. It's probably made just in case Rogue needs this effect. I don't know. I don't know why it was made. Uh, how good is Jade Rogue? 2 damage for 2 mana. Fine. Summon a Golem. Not bad. Kind of like a backstab. A better backstab, so he's like 0 0.5 mana. And then you summon a Golem. That's how much like a Golem is worth it, like 1.5 mana usually. So already if you get like a 3-3 it's worth it, but you're gonna get a 1-1 one, one, and then a 2-2 two, two, and then a 3-3. Three, three. So you have to like evaluate all, like would you pay 4.5 mana for a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2 two, two, and a 3-3? Three, three? Probably not. Then would you pay 6 mana for a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-4? Four, four? Not awesome, but then when you start getting a 5-5, five, five, a 6-6, six, six, a 7-7, seven, seven, then it starts getting really nice. But uh, how good is Jade Rogue? The cards are pretty cheap that make uh, the golem, so you can play like a lot of cards that back them up. 1-1 one, one Stealth is probably better than 0 0.5 mana, which would be average for what it does. And then what do you have? Then you have the Jade Spirit, which summons a Jade Golem. You have this to discover from other classes, and then you have Aya. I don't know, Jade Rogue might be fine. You have more tools than you have in the Shaman. Shaman, which doesn't really have good Jade cards. If you look at Shaman, Jade Claws is one of the cards. 
And then the other one is Jade Chieftain and Jade Lightning. The thing is that you don't really want to play the weapon because you already have Spirit Claws and Spirit Claws last you for 3 turns. And it's like the best weapon in the game probably because you made the in your entire deck around that weapon. This is too expensive to be able to like play twice and get some value out of it efficiently. And this even though it's good and it's damage, it's still expensive. I don't think it's good enough to... Yeah, it's definitely not good enough to play it on its own just for the damage part. So I'm not sure about Jade Shaman, doesn't look that good unless somebody finds out like a broken deck around it, but I doubt it. Taunt Jade Golem, I don't know. White Eyes, I really like this. Works really nice with Barnes. So that means it also works with Unzolf. Works really nice in like the Control Shaman, in the Grinder Shaman. Maybe people are gonna play like an Unzolf Control Shaman. This card is bad. Discover card with Overload, Overload 1. Didn't check all the Overload cards. But they are pretty good usually. Most of them. And you discover so you can choose one. But the thing is that you, you pay one mana now and you pay one overload. It's pretty expensive. Might still work in the kind of way that would need it. Again, very expensive card. You pay more than like one mana. You pay one mana and one mana next time, so you kind of pay two mana, but not really. So. If you compare it to Raven Idol, the card quality is probably better. You can only choose spells, that's not a problem. But then at the same time you overload yourself for one. So if you can use that overload somehow, maybe it's okay. This is heal. It's a good card, but shamans don't really want to play 4 drops in the current midrange shaman build. In another build, I don't know, maybe. Like there was like a popular build made only around the 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven guy. Heck, the, fo the, the whole meta was around that card. Everybody either had to like play Shaman or try to counter it or had it in their back of their minds. But I'm not sure if you can make a deck around this guy that can support the 4 drop curve. Maybe you could. But then why is... Why are cards like Master of Evolution not being played? Restore 6 health. People might still just play it over like bars in their mid range shaman decks just to have some heal, take their opponent by surprise. It's not really a bad body, but the fact that it overloads you is like killing it. If you don't have overload, you definitely play it over bars, even if it was like 2 6. But the overload kind of like makes it annoying because you cannot go this into, into Drake in some situations. It's strictly good in like late game when you want to like uh, cheat out some heal. Maybe it will see play, we'll see. This is bad. This seems bad too, right? 4 1 1 Murlocs for 4 mana. It's not even like Master for Battle, it's a bit weaker. Just summon the Murlocs. It's kind of like Forbidden Ritual, but it's strictly for 4 and it gives you strictly Murlocs. The thing is that you can have the combo with like everything is awesome. So maybe, maybe you can make some. Uh, insane combos but if this deck ever, ever becomes good there's so many board clears now especially after the new expansion probably not gonna be good okay warlock warlock finally got some good cards like usually they get like the short end of the stick but now all the warlock cards seem interesting i mean most of them starting from cruel which is like an unzoff which doesn't require setup but it requires you to have a hand then you just play it and you hope you don't have removal. If you don't have removal, just kill them. Very interesting card. Really nice in wild, because you can get Mulganis, right? Like Reno. Reno Demon May uh, Warlock, sorry. The random demon is not really that good. If this doesn't stick for more than one time, then it's pretty bad, but if this can stick, then it's gonna be like a decent card. It's very hard to like make it stick though, with that much time. Eh, probably not gonna be that great. Even though 666 is not bad. Nah, not gonna be that great. This card seems nice. Maybe you play it in Renalog, maybe you play it in Zoo. 
Zulu already has way too many free drops. You would need to like play a different type of Zulu. A Zulu that has like a lot of uh, one drops, so you just empty your hand and you play this guy on free, and then you don't do anything. Then you just like trade with the guy and like let him die but get value out of it kind of. He's good in the, kind, in the type of deck that, uh, where you just like play it and kill it next turn. Maybe in Rino Lock with Shadow Flame. It's not really that bad there. Also in Rino Lock you play like maximum one minion afterwards and then he dies. Uh, you can just not play anything and tap and like milk value out of him. He's probably better than Indian boss in this deck. Fellfire Potion, like a better Hellfire. Depending on the meta it might see play, it's a very strong card. Uh, this is garbage. Blood Fury Potion is not really insane, it's just like an average card. Demon Fire is already being played in Zoo, but again, Demon Fire is 2 mana. You can just go 1 drop and then like buff the 1 drop and take him by surprise, do a fast trade. On turn 3, you usually want to do something else. You want to play your Indian boss, you want to play your Consumer. I understand that 3 3 is really nice, but. It's also not as conditional as Demon Fire, but it can also not be used on your opponent's minion. So it requires to have board control. It's just average. Just average, just fair card. Piece of Enforcer. This card is insane. One of the best cards of the set, I think. It's very nicely costed. 6-6 six, six, and the Hellfire attached to it. And he doesn't hit himself. Really good strong card. Blast Crystal Potion. I think it's a nice card for Hino. Like if you play like on 8, 9, 10 mana, you don't really care to destroy one of your mana crystals. And it's like the Shadow Flame of BGH. It's better than BGH because it's not conditional to like the minion having like a lot of attack. You can just kill something with 6 attack. You can kill like an Emperor or something like that. It's like annoying you. Seems good in Hino Lock. Give all your demons plus 1 plus 1. Too conditional to work. This is a card that is like interesting. Some say it might be good in Pirate Warrior, but I'm not really sure. I've been talking to some to some like uh, Pirate Warrior experts, and they were saying that it's not really that good. It's a bit too slow. I'm not sure if you want this card, but I like the design. Very interesting to like make an aggro deck play for like the late game. This is garbage. Too hard to activate in garbage. I think it's a really good card. Warriors already played the Iron Forge Portal, which is like an awful card, like absolutely awful card. And they play it because they have nothing better on the five slot. Of course, if you'd have Belcher, you'd play Belcher, but we don't have Belcher currently. So Ali Arbor's name seems actually nice. Whenever this minion deals damage, so even if they attack it, like if they attack it like two times to kill it or three times, you get like four or six armor. You deal damage back. Seems nice. If you compare it with the portal, it's kind of like you get roughly the same armor, usually more than four. Let's say four on average, because if they kill it with a spell, you get nothing because you deal no damage back. But sometimes you can also attack if they don't kill it and they just get armor by attacking. This guy is like a nightmare for like freeze mage because they have to use removal on it or otherwise you get two extra armor per turn. I mean you already beat freeze mage anyways. Maybe we see Kodo coming back because of this. It would be interesting. You have a random weapon in your hand plus one plus one. Not sure how good this is. The pawn broker. It's also not a pirate. Hard to say. Give you a random taunt minion in your hand, plus 3, plus 3. Again, this card has potential. Has potential with all the armors, me. But again, buffing one minion will just mean that if your opponent has a removal, he cashes in because he kills two cards with one removal. At the same time, if you buff something like Sogot, they, then they cannot remove it and then they get punished. So maybe we can see some interesting combos with this and Sogot later on. This card is like massive value, but uh, how can you make it survive? That's gonna be the issue, I guess. This card is garbage. Not great, not, not a great card, but yeah, nice design. I like the 
image. Garbage, garbage. It's just too conditional to work and it's too random and too bad. Badly started and all that. This is how Yogg should have been. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Raffian is that good, I was thinking of it a lot. Like, the chance of you drawing like dragons back to back, you need to like draw like two dragons to make it worth playing. Maybe like three. That's a bit too wacky. Then you just like rather play, pay one more mana and play um, the curator. But yeah, that doesn't give you dragons, it gives something else, but still. Probably not gonna be good. It would have been very interesting, but probably too strong. It would be like draw a card until you draw a dragon. Then you could like only play like very little dragons and then like have those to stop you from like drawing way too many cards. Finia. I'm not sure how good Finia is. Like she can be interesting in the kind of Mogul that Shaman was, that Shaman had the option to it, like everything is awesome. But would you play Finia in Moglock Paladin? Because she's also a Moglock. If she wouldn't be a Moglock, she would be really good in Moglock Paladin. Just play her, attack, get your Moglocks out of the deck. Awesome, right? But the thing is that when you play anything can happen, you get Finia again. And she doesn't charge. She occupies one board slot. So at the same time, she gets her Moolocks so much faster. So maybe if she gets her Moolocks fast enough to just not make it matter that you get Finia as a useless minion on the board later on in the game, then maybe she's okay. Jens on the shark. It's just bad because it has to like attack, it doesn't have stealth to guard the attack. Just bad, they will always kill it almost. It's like pretty bad card but has a lot of possibilities. Like you can play the arena lock with PL even though I think it's a bit wacky. Yeah, it has possibilities, it's a bit wacky, but yeah. No. Patches. Probably the best card of this expansion. Seems super strong. It is very strong. It will make like pirate decks very annoying. Just play something, get another like patches. And one of the most annoying pirate cards we'll get to eat later is like a one mana pirate that just can summon patches and you play like a weapon on turn two and you like already start to hit them and hit them good. Okay. Like look, let me show you this guy. Has plus two attack while you have a weapon equipped. This is even good in rogue, just turn one of this, turn to hero power. 3-2. One mana 3-2. Flaming. Cogmaster. How are we gonna call it? Uh, yeah, where we are, where we are at. Wind up Bot. Whenever this attacks a minion and survives, draw a card. Garbage. Silence a minion with Ephratal. I mean, it's good against Sylvanas. It's good against Cairn. If those cards ever get good, maybe. I doubt it. I doubt this card is like, eh. Has the wacky potential. This card is nice. If you can get a draw, it's kind of like an ancient of lore. Very strong card. If you can get a draw. In days that buff your hand, she can just buff herself and then just play her and you draw cards. Because she considers herself too. We saw that when they did the testing for the mistakes on the official stream. So yeah, again, very hard card to evaluate. We need to like see how it plays out. This might see plays sometimes, but probably not. It's good against like Freeze Mage, Control Warrior, Reno Log, just control decks, but you already have a lot of anti-control deck tools. Not sure if a 6-6 conditional charger is good enough. This card might be good in like rogue decks just to get extra coins. Yeah, this card seems okay, seems playable. It's better than the other uh, troll guys that we had in the other expansions because those were getting attacks, so you just kill them and you don't really care. But this gives you some resources in your hand. 
So they have like, look at the amount of spells they use to kill it. And if they can't kill it on board, then they get super punished. Might actually be a good card in Rogue, maybe even a stable. Very interesting card in like Priest decks, probably. When this I can get value out of this kind of effect. This is bad, too slow. Very interesting card again. So many cards this expansion are just like made interesting and it's hard to like dissect them and evaluate them. Dirty rat. Like this might be also like a card used to like uh, neutralize very powerful effects from your opponents, for example. Yeah. It's a very nice card in like... A situation where you really want to get rid of their combo card, like Leroy. Maybe we will see like in a tournament and then it will make like a highlight. This card is unplayable. Free mana Senjin, if your opponent has at least three minions. You might play it in like Arena Log, but it's not really great. Um, it's like a playable charge. There's like a lot of taunts in the meta and if some of them will be played, you might see this thing play. It would be better in a meta game with like less powerful taunts, where you can play this, trade with your other minions on the board, and then hit this on face or on some better target. Might be good enough against shamans because of the thing from below and all that. But you don't really want to pay five mana to do a thing from below, do you? If you could stack bigger taunts, then Black Knight should be better than this. It's a fun card, but I'm not sure how strong it actually is. Like, how much do you have to buff it for it to become, like, insane? I guess if you can buff it with Don Han Cho, then it's, like, a really powerful minion, but... It'll almost never happen. Really interesting card, too. Can deal with a lot of things. But then you also take some damage to the face. Dealing 5 damage is like better than 5 elemental, 2-2 two, two body is like worth 1 mana. So you basically pay 4 mana and 4 health to deal 5 damage, it's pretty expensive but it might see some play in some situations, I don't really know. Like, um, backroom bouncer, whenever a friendly minion dies, gain plus 1 attack. Yeah, not really good. The, the the health is too small. This guy, this guy is so strong. He's like better than Cogmaster, and Cogmaster was like played in every mech deck. This guy might make Paradex be insane. The thing is that whenever Agro decks become like insane, there will be like control decks that just beat them, like control warriors or something like that, tuned exactly to beat pirates. But uh, at least we're gonna see pirates be tier one for some time probably. This card is like so strong. It's freaking insane. This card is bad on its own, but very nice with Bran. Combo that you'll probably never pull off, so no. Just bad stats. Bad stats, why would you ever play this? Too slow, and just reveals the stealth. If it would kill the stealth minions, well, then we're gonna have a different story. Red mana worms, how good are red mana worms? Um. Whenever he casts a spell game, plus two attack. Uh, this might be like a really nice card in Rogue, for example. Yeah, you might see Rogue playing this card to efficiency. Maybe you have like decent questing adventure, or counterfeit coins and like the other five mana guy. But then you also want to fit in Azeg Grace and Tumpida Joyce, and you might have just too many fives and fours. But maybe somebody like makes it work somehow, like cutting some of the fives. Maybe cutting Auction and just going completely all in. On the coin spell, conceal, damage, synergy, but then how do you get the cards? 
I might try to play around myself with some of these. Very, very interesting concept. Interesting stats, but no. Uh, interesting effect. Probably not good enough. Unless we're gonna play like a meta with like a lot of big minions. Like a very, it's a value bomb, but it's not consistent enough. We already have this for two mana. Just four four and doubling the mana because I'm not sure if it's gonna make anything better. It's basically a four four four, and then for every card the extra they draw, it gains like one per turn. Instantly, it's not really that insane. Naga Corsair give weapon plus one attack. This is also not that great. If we're up, this is the most awful one because they will never have the empty hand. Uh, deal one damage to the enemy hero. This is awful. Like these cards are like the worst of the set. Like free mana for the free one. Are you kidding me? And this, they, if they ever have the empty hand, you're gonna win anyways. It's like awful card. Hired gun. Pretty bad. If it does like a free for it to be like uh, the monkey, but yeah, and the current stats is not really that great. Toxic Sewer Ooze, remove one durability from your opponent's weapon. It's kind of like the one mana pirate, but with like better static body. Still like four free is like too offensive to like be worth playing. I don't think it's that great. This is garbage, garbage. A Farseer for two to two, and two. I'm not sure. I'd rather play this. This looks like a really nice card, the Mistress of Mixtures. There's a lot of options, free. Also really nice in like some control decks. Compared to Zombie Charge, she only has 2 HP, so that's why she might not be that great, but she's still like fine. Um, friendly Bartender. Not that good at either. But like, from the neutrals, we still have some interesting neutral cards. There's some really strong ones. Like, looking at neutrals, I kind of like a lot patches. This has potential, this, this. Uh, like, insane potential, this card is Maul Time Buccaneer. He's gonna be a big time very, very, very soon. Red Mana Arm has potential. Yeah, and mixtures. And from other cards, maybe this is a sleeper card, I don't notice. Like maybe like how Consumant was and I didn't really realize it's full power until we start playing with them. The set overall is really exciting. I really like like the directions they went for most of the classes. I'm really interested of how it's gonna like uh, affect the game. That the randomness we have is gonna like influence your hand and you have to like use that in your way. And also like we have Discover which is like a skillful RNG in a way because you have to like use it yourself. You have to work for it a bit more and like pick something that fits a situation and then also like find a situation that fits it properly. But yeah, I'm super excited for the Mrs. of Gatasan. Probably by the time this video is gonna be out, the set is either gonna like be very soon released or released already. I hope I offered some insight in the set, but again, I cannot like uh, give like insane predictions. I just have to like review the card like very very vaguely kind of and give some ideas of on some of the cards but you can check out my stream and i'll try some decks there i will always try like the most competitive decks i will not like uh, troll around with like uh, bad low tier decks i will always try to like uh, play the best decks so if you want to see the best decks just join my stream and you'll see the best decks and after i play between the expansion i can tell you like way more in depth about every card like if i play like one or two weeks with like these cards I'll be able to like give you a perfect, uh, a detailed description of the card. Even though some cards I argue with a lot of other players, like for example, like Bubbly Book and yeah, these kind of random cards, I don't really like the randomness and I maybe undervaluate them. But yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a great time, see you next time.